one of my favorite games of all time, and I think I could probably beat it using AI. Link's Awakening cracked the market when it released. It was built up of a team with new developers and new ideas to reinvent what Zelda meant on a new console. With the announcement of its spiritual successor, I think it's about time I try and take a look at this game in a different light. Could we beat it using just the computer? This was younger me's favorite game to play, and I loved the remaster, but I really think that I can take it to the next level. Now, there's a couple of different technologies to do this, but the best one is training an AI to actually see the game and press the correct buttons to get as far as possible. So, let's build our first neural network. We want our AI to see the screen, so we can take the screen and break it apart and turn it into numbers. The Game Boy resolution is 160 by 144 pixels. So at a minimum, our AI needs to take in 23,000 nodes. Then, through multiple layers, we have to make it decide what buttons to press. These are the D-pad, A, B, Start, and Select. This is a lot, but we can reduce the complexity. The Game Boy renders using sprites and tiles. Each of these tiles can be represented by a number. So, the Game Boy uses 20 tiles and 18 tiles. This is the kind of stuff that can help us speed up the training process, but every tiny thing that we change can massively change the output of the AI. We now have the basic structure of my neural network, but how are we going to get it to do something? Through training, we can change how the AI acts. At the beginning, it will do random actions, and we can tell the program if it's doing something good or something bad. For Link's Awakening, we have access to the game's ROM and the Game Boy's RAM. These two sections of memory can help tell the network how it's doing. Inside of these chips hold the number of gems, the items in Link's inventory, and what screens Link has discovered, and even how far into the story Link is. For starters, let's have Link explore. So I hooked up the memory locations that are used for showing the player what locations they have discovered in the map. If everything works the way I want, Link should learn how to explore, even if it is aimlessly. With a simple program written up, I can start training. But doing a single run of training over a few hours can quickly add up to a lot of time. Most networks need hundreds of hours of training, if not more, to function the way they are intended. So we need to adapt our way of thinking. Computers can go faster. So we can start by speeding up the game. This can speed up training from two times all the way up to 12 or 30 times the speed. And if we're lucky, we can even go farther if we have good computer hardware. The second thing we can do is run more than one game at a time. Imagine a warehouse of Game Boys running the game at 30 times the speed. That means in one day we can get the equivalent of just under 12,000 hours of training on my computer. Now this is at the best of times. I use my computer for a lot of things, so it's going to be much lower than that but you can see the potential for mass training even when I don't have to pay for big servers. But it's time to shove a ton of virtual game poise into a virtual dungeon to play some virtual games. Ready, set, go. Come on, do something. This is when I realized that this was going to take a while. Within the first day, one of the links adventured out of the house. This was a big win. Most of the games did not make it outside but every time, it was more likely to happen. From here, we can learn a few things. One, training for only one hour of time is not enough. And two, outside is still not rewarding enough. Link needs to touch grass. Most Links will gladly stay inside and walk around the bed for hours. Time for version two. This time, we can add some inventory stuff. For each item in Link's inventory, I will give a static boost to the reward. So picking up the sword or the shield can help break him away from his home. This is true for rupees as well, but I didn't want it to be the main motivator. This worked well, but getting the shield from Terran was now the most profitable thing from going outside. I quickly realized that this was a bad way of handling it. So instead, I removed the reward for just the shield specifically, or at least reduced its impact. Just because we have cool stuff at home does not mean we can't find more outside. 
Rounds 3, 4, and 5 all tracked the same. Link does something bad, I try to fix it, it gets slightly better or terribly worse. And I keep trying. This is where I started to lose some steam and lose a little bit of hope. I was still barely outside of the house. Then I had an amazing idea. What if Link started outside of the house using a save state? He would already have the shield and nothing else. He would just need to find the sword. Kind of a work ahead and a fix the house problem later, but I think it's gonna work well. With my new cheaty ways, Link learned how to explore better. However, the same issues presented themselves. I let it run for a few days, and in that time, only one of the bots did something amazing. One of them obtained the Master Sword. This is what we are looking for. After three weeks of endless training and molding, my bot is a little crazy. It was only able to kill a couple of them, and then it almost immediately dies. If any of you have any suggestions on how to make this bot work better, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Or, if you want to yell at me more personally, check out the Discord in the description. As always, over on my GitHub has all of the commit history and the code that I used for the project. Also, I probably could have ponied up some money and did the training on a real server out in the ethos, but eh, it's good enough. But that's it for me for now, but you know, fun.